Okay, thanks. Uh, first, uh, thanks the organizer for inviting me. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot visit Korea and I hope I will have the opportunity soon. So uh, my talk is based on uh, a recent paper with uh, Yin Xuan Lin. Uh, he's moving from Caltech to Harvard. Okay. Um, anomaly in, um, uh, an, the study of anomaly has a very long history. An important milestone is the Wesumino consistency condition. And um, this is basically the statement of the anomalous transformation is compatible with the symmetry algebra. And um, the Wesumino consistency condition together with some local properties of anomaly led to the descent equations and the uh, cohomological classification of perturbative anomalies. And this follows the work by uh, Stora and Zumino. And a very nice review on this series of work can be found in the Tazi lecture by Harvey. So this is a, a, a screenshot of Wes Zumino's paper. You can see that this paper has, uh, is already almost 50 years old. A more, um, a more recent um, approach to anomaly is uh, follows the, the inflow and is a statement that uh, anomaly in D dimension is the inflow of a classical action in D plus one dimension. And the, this inflow picture um, has, um, there are many recent work on this and has already, um, gradually developed to a paradigm, I would call it inflow paradigm. And a very natural question to ask that based on the inflow paradigm, can we classify anomalies using inflow? And this question has already known to be uh, not true or inadequate for conformal or wild anomalies. And, but uh, this is assumed to be okay for top anomalies of internal symmetry or space-time symmetry. Uh, the Toff anomaly is a controlled breaking of symmetries in QFT. And let me uh, describe it in, in uh, more precise uh, equations. So uh, the partition function on some background, I would denote it by phi, and it can be metric, gauge field, or any other fields. And transform under uh, background transformation, I denote it by lambda. That can be diffeomorphism or background gauge transformation and so on. And uh, the transformation will generate an anomalous phase and like this equation. So this phi with lambda superscript denote the background after the uh, background transformation. And so the partition function after the transformation equals to the partition function before the transformation with a phase. And this phase is a, a functional of the background field phi and the background transformation lambda. And the inflow paradigms uh, assert that um, there is this uh, D plus one dimensional bulk action or classical action that transform uh, in the opposite way and with uh, uh, inverse phase. So if we consider the combined system, the bulk plus boundary, then the system is free from anomaly. So we can classify the d-dimensional anomaly by classifying the d plus one dimensional bulk phases. And here I list some of the results. Uh, in uh, When d plus one equals one to three dimensions, the bulk phases can be uh, classified by group cohomology, followed work by Chen Gu Liu Wen, uh, Hong Wen and Wen, and many other people. And in dimension d plus one equals one to six, the bulk phases are classified by cobordism. And some of these results assume bulk reflection positivity. And this uh, based on the work by Kabustin, uh, Frieden Hopkins, Unikura, and many other people. And there are also uh, some results assume, uh, or I mean, consider the system with topological order. This basically means that they consider a more general transformation of partition function, not just by a phase. And I mean, the partition function can transform like a vector 
under the transformation and uh, by the resolve of these people. And now let's consider a more uh, specific case. Uh, consider one plus one dimensional QFT with the U1 symmetry. And uh, we will restrict the QFT to be, uh, can be defined on Riemann geometry. Um, uh, what I really mean is that I consider non-spin QFT. So uh, in this case, uh, partition function will, will transform like a scalar. I mean, the anomaly just generate a phase. Um, and um, so in this case, um, the, the background field I will consider will be the metric uh, spin connection or the curvature or the U1 gauge field and the field strength. So uh, by the inflow paradigm, the one plus one D anomaly are inflowed by the bulk uh, two plus one D transimens action. And for the gravitational anomaly, uh, the two plus one D action is the uh, gravitational transimens and with the level being identified with the anomaly coefficient, I label it by uh, kappa R square. And for the U1, uh, pure U1 anomaly, um, the bulk action is the uh, U1, uh, is a U1 transimens action, and the level is identified with the, uh, the U1 anomaly coefficient, kappa F square. And uh, we know that uh, for the transimens action to be well-defined, uh, the level has to be quantized. And uh, this would translate to a quantization condition for the anomaly coefficients in part one plus one D. So um, the, the gravitational anomaly coefficient um, by this quantization should be a multiple of eight and the U1 anomaly coefficient should be an even integer. So, and in CFT, uh, the anomaly coefficients are related to uh, TTOPE and JJOPE. And usually this condition uh, is phrased in terms of the quantization condition on, on this OP coefficient, namely the, the chiral central charge and the chiral level. So usually the quantization condition is phrased in that the chiral central charge should be a multiple of eight and the chiral level, that's the left level minus the right level should be an even integer. And, but uh, this quantization condition from the, the inflow paradigm uh, are violated by a very simple uh, CFD, the BC GOAT system. So here I sum first summarize some fact on basic on uh, BC, holomorphic BC system. So this is the free theory of Grassmann fields, B and C. And with this uh, chiral action, we have uh, B partial bar C as a Lagrangian. And um, so these B and C fields are holomorphic and they have conformal weights, uh, lambda and one minus lambda. And lambda right now is a free parameter of this theory. And this theory has a, a U1 ghost number symmetry and that's just given by B times C with a uh, normal order. And under this U1 symmetry, the uh, B field has charge minus one and C field has charge one. And using B and C, we can also construct the stress tensor and this parameter appear, lambda appear in the stress tensor also. So now, um, when lambda is an integer, uh, the B and C uh, ghosts, they, have, they will have uh, integer spins. So because uh, they, they are holomorphic fields, they do not have, they have zero holomorphic weight. So, sorry, they, they, they have zero anti-holomorphic weight. So the holomorphic weight would just be their spin. And if they have integer spin, then they can oh, be defined on arbitrary. This ghost, uh, and, uh, uh, this ghost system is a, a reflection positive or? No, it's not reflection positive. Uh. Yeah, I will, I will comment on that later. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So um, they can be defined on arbitrary Riemann surfaces without specifying spin structure. And um, so if we compute the central, the chiral central charge and it using the TTOB, basically using uh, this formula and then do some direct computation, we will find out that, um, so the chiral central charge depends on this parameter lambda. And when lambda is an integer, we see that it's minus two plus uh, 24 times the integer. And we can also use the formula for J to compute the chiral level. We find that chiral level equals one. So this is incompatible with the quantization of the transamus level. And I will write the quantization here. So we see that um, it's just incompatible. So, so here I give uh, an outline of today's talk. So first, uh, we will try to classify Toff anomaly from a purely one plus one D perspective uh, instead of the two plus one D perspective from infro. And then we will verify that the holomorphic BC go system so anomaly really fit into this above classification. So that's the first part of today's talk. And in the second part, I will talk about a, a mixed U1 gravitational anomaly uh, that also appear in the holomorphic BC go system. And, and this anomaly is also related to uh, something called the isotopy anomaly of the topological defect lines in this theory. Okay, so uh, part one, uh, pure anomalies. And okay, so let's go back to our traditional roots and study the Wezumino consistency condition. And um, it turns out that we need a finite version of the Wezumino consistency condition. And this is amount to the statement of the commutativity of this diagram. So if we start with some partition function that depends on the background field and apply a, a background gauge transformation, a background transformation, basically follow this blue arrow and with the the uh, parameter of the transformation being lambda one times lambda two, and we get another partition function that that uh, would be the origin one times the phase. But now, if we go in another route and uh, uh, first do a, a background transformation of lambda one, and then do a background transformation of lambda two, and we will get another two phases. So, so the phase is given here. And um, the commutativity of this diagram is amount to the statement that uh, this combination of the phase should be two pi times an integer. And uh, so this relation is what we call the finite Wezumino consistency condition. If we consider infinitesimal lambda, then this equation will reduce to the original Wezumino consistency condition. Uh, besides the finite Wezumino consistency condition, we also need to impose some locality conditions. So we have these two locality conditions. First, the first one is that uh, we want to assume that the anomalous phase is a local functional of phi. And the second condition is uh, if we take lambda to be infinitesimal, then the anomalous phase uh, should be a local functional of both phi and the lambda. And it also vanishes when tri on trivial background. So that, that really means that the gauge field equals, the background gauge field equals zero and the matrix is flat. And uh, this second locality condition can be um, argued from, uh, the, 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 from, from the later consideration. So if we consider on trivial background, and um, the, so, so since we consider uh, um, infinitesimal lambda, so, so the group should be a continuous group and, and there will be a current associated to that. So the current should conserve away from uh, any other operator insertion. So that's a case on trivial background. 
and uh, more precisely, uh, in correlation functions, uh, the, the correlation function involving the, the current with uh, this nabla mu j mu, and and this kind of correlation function uh, should equals to some contact terms. So this relation is true for symmetry without anomaly, and we we expect that this is also true for system with with anomaly. And if this uh, second locality condition is false, then uh, the anomalous wall identity will violate uh, this structure. And uh, our first uh, locality condition can be think of as an extension of this second locality condition um, to more general uh, background transformation lambda. Okay. Let me uh, pause a bit. Uh, any other, any questions on this? Okay, so um, these two uh, locality condition can be stated more precisely uh, in, in the following. So that this curly G be the space of background transformation, the space of all background transformations. And uh, in general, uh, G will have many kinetic components and we, uh, we can label them by Gn. And uh, we use G0 to, to label the kinetic component that contains the trivial transformation. And now um, let me uh, uh, use this AI to denote the basis of local functionals of uh, phi and lambda. And we also uh, require that these basis of local functionals will vanish when uh, phi equals zero, namely on trivial background. And then the previous uh, two uh, locality condition would uh, tell us that the anomalous phase admit an expansion in this basis of local functional like this one. So uh, this ki are the expansion coefficient and there's also another function theta and both ki and theta, they only depends on uh, the label of the kinetic components. And uh, theta of n uh, will satisfy a further condition that uh, when n equals zero, uh, theta of th uh, the theta should be zero. So let's check that uh, this uh, equation really satisfy our previous two locality condition. So the first locality condition is um, just said that the anomalous phase should be a local functional of phi. So this is indeed true. And the second locality condition uh, uh, says that when the uh, uh, lambda is uh, is infinitesimal, and in particular that that means that um, lambda should be in uh, g zero, so so we we can set n equals zero, and then the theta term just gone, and the thing uh, remain will be a local function of uh, both phi and lambda, so we this. Uh, equation also satisfy the second locality condition. Excuse me, uh, sorry, I missed what is N. Can you please uh, say again what is N? Oh, N is just this label. So we label the kinetic component by N. I see, okay, oh, thank you. Good. Did, did you define uh, what is uh, theta there, or the set oh. parameter? Theta is just some function of n. So, uh, so this one is uh, some some answers that will satisfy the two locality condition. So the unknown in, in these answers are the are this coefficient kappa and this the, the theta. Uh, and so later on we will consider a special, I mean we, we will we will consider uh, different kinds of anomaly and use finite Wazumino consistency condition, try to fix these unknowns. Oh, okay, okay. Good. Hey, wait, sorry, what is the subscript I? Oh, I, um, so AI is the basis of local functional. So, so there could be many uh, 
different local functional of phi and lambda. And like right uh -huh. here as a, yeah. So I just sum over the basis vectors. Okay, thank you. Good. Any other questions? Okay. So now uh, the, the next thing I would like to do is just basically take these on loss and apply to different example and then use uh, final web zoom in to try to fix these unknowns. So first, let's consider the uh, gravitational anomaly in 2D. And for simplicity, we will consider uh, CFT and uh, also put the CFT on flat torus. So basically the thing we want, want to study is the anomaly of the large diffeomorphism SO2Z. And by locality, uh, the anomalous phase, the anomalous phases are uh, actually constants. Uh, that's because no local functional AI could be right down. Um, I think this is uh, kind of obvious because we are on flat torus. So the spin connection is zero and the, it's also a vanishing curvature. So not, not, nothing, um, there no, no local functional can be written down. So we just have the, the only thing left is just this function theta. And of course, this, this uh, large diffeomorphism is a discrete group. And so um, each group element is, is a, a kinetic component. So we just have this um, transformation rule. And here, I actually implicitly assume that the Pajin function does not vanish identically for all torus module at tau. And if uh, the partition function vanishes for all tau, then um, actually the, the anomalous phase is L defined because you, you just get zero equals zero. And let's move on. So now um, we can apply finite wet zoomino, try to uh, constrain this phase theta. And the solution to the finite wet zoomino consistency condition is just uh, uh, given by the uh, group cohomology H1 PSL2Z comma U1. And this group cohomology is isomorphic to Z6. Okay, let me explain this formula a bit. So we have PSL2Z, not SL2Z. That's because uh, the Z2 subgroup of SL2Z just acts trivially on the torus moduli tau. So we basically uh, model that Z2 subgroup and get PSL2Z. And the coefficient uh, in this group homology is U1. That's because um, our phase is just a constant and that valued in U1. So we have the U1 coefficient. And um, the finite wet zoomino consistency condition uh, is just uh, equals to the closeness condition of this group homology. Uh, let me describe the, the solutions that uh, corresponds to the generator of this Z6. And um, the, the general phase uh, that depends on uh, these ABCD integers can be determined by uh, only two phases, the phase under the S transformation, I denote by theta S, and the phase under the T transformation, theta T. And the generator of Z6 is given by uh, theta s equals pi mod two pi, and theta t equals pi over three mod two pi. And uh, the phase on the t transformation is also related to the chiral central charge and by this formula. So we get the quantization condition on chiral central charge. So that is uh, minus four plus uh, 24 times the integer. And so any other uh, element of Z6 can be uh, obtained by uh, uh, just multiplying the, the generator by, by, by this generator of Z6. So now let's consider uh, any odd element of Z6. So that would be given by uh, theta S equals pi mod two pi and the chiral central charge being uh, a times the integer plus four. And because uh, theta s equals pi, 
this tells us that at the S invariant point, namely the square torus, the partition function vanishes. Uh, that's just simply because uh, the square torus is invariant under the S transformation. And, but if pi uh, if theta S equals pi, then the partition function will flip sign. So we get Z equals minus Z. So Z should be zero. The square torus is also uh, invariant under, a ref under some reflections. Uh, for example, uh, we can reflect the torus uh, along uh, this dashed line. And uh, if the CFD is reflection positive, then um, the partition function on square torus should be positive because square torus is a reflection symmetric configuration. So this tells us that uh, for reflection positive CFD, the chiral central charge should be A times the integer. And this condition agrees with the, the condition from the anomaly inflow. Okay, so next let's consider more general situation. What if a partition function vanishes identically for all tau? And in this case, uh, we can consider torus one point function instead. Um, the solution to the final Wezumino condition is just given by uh, this group homology. We have H1 SL2Z comma U1. Uh, we have SL2Z, that's because the, right now for torus one point function, the Z2 subgroup actually will act non-trivially on torus one point function. And uh, this group homology is isomorphic to Z12. And um, by and we can also look at the generators and, and the generate the, the other element will be generated by the generators. And we will find out that I would not uh, bore you with the details and I will just state the thing that we will see. So if, oh, oh sorry. I, yeah, because I'm in quarantine, so I actually need to take this phone call. I'm really sorry. Well, anyhow, uh, 张启明先生啊，没错。嗯，我们核对一下你的康费和房费啊。嗯，好。康费是一千三。嗯，好。房费是三九二零啊。哦。一共是五二二零。哦，好，谢谢。我帮你去 check。呃呃，我用我用微信支付。微信啊，明天会有工作人员去收啊。好好，没问题。好，再见。再见。Yeah, I'm I'm really sorry. Yeah, oh, because okay, yeah, okay. yeah, I'm in quarantine. If I do not take this, if I do not take this phone call, I, I might have some problem. Okay, so um, okay, so if uh, at least one uh, torus one point function does not vanish identically, then we would arrive at the conclusion that the chiral central charge should be an even integer, and uh, we can uh, further prove the that um, if the chiral central charge is a even integer but is not a multiple of four, then the CFD must uh, contain uh, uh, some uh, Grassmann value operators. So we can prove this statement. You can find it out in our paper, but I will not give the detail. Okay, uh, any question on this? Uh, may uh, so I? Far? So you can you go back uh, two or three slides back? Uh, here? Yeah, yeah, here. So, so this uh, equation for theta s to be pi means that the partition function is not modular invariant under this s transformation. Yes, that's right. Um, right. So, um, uh, if partition function is modular invariant, that would that basically says that uh, there is no anomaly uh, under the uh, SO2Z diffeomorphism. But right now we want to study the, the theory with SO2Z anomaly. So we will assume that uh, the partition function is not yes, marginal yes, invariant, yes. but, but marginal invariant is only broken very mild. It, but yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But, but, but still you are dealing with the conformal phase theory. Right, that's right. And this model invariance is actually part of the component symmetry. Um, uh, so, um, 
So, so I would say it's part of the deep morphism. So, um, so uh, uh, SO2C is actually a, a combination of uh, deep morphism and wild transformation. And uh, so here, I, I actually assume that the, the theory has, um, has no, uh, this so un under that particular wild transformation, there's no anomaly for the theory. But, but hey, so do you have any specific homophobic in mind? Uh, yes, yeah, so we, we will actually see that the, okay, for example, um, you can see the finally I got that uh, the carbocentral charge is an even integer, and we will see that this, this, this quantization condition is actually saturated by the BC gold system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And there are, there are, there are many other. Um, Sorry, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, so I think that this anomaly alone can determine the central charge. So I fixed uh, it like the constraint central charge. Like for example, you cannot have like fractional central charge. Uh, it determines the difference between the holomorphic and uh, the holomorphic so, central charge. Oh, sorry, this C minus is a difference, you mean? Yes, right. Uh, oh, I see, I see, sorry, yeah. That's I made a mistake. It, it, maybe I didn't emphasize. So C minus oh, okay. is called see, the chiral central charge and is uh, C left minus C right. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. And but for, if you have consider holomorphic CFD and then that's just the, the central charge. Okay. Um, so um, there are, so I mean, uh, you 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 may say that the BC go system is is um, non unitary, and um, but um, so there are, there are there are many examples of unitary CFD that the, their central charge the chiral central charge is multiple of eight, and and um, they are they are they are also not um, invariant know. under the four SL two Z. Yeah, for example, the the E the, the EA Wesumino. Uh, sorry, the EAWZ model at level one that has chiral central charge eight, eight times uh, integer. Yeah, but that's model invariant. It is uh, one of this uh, complete classification of the, of the. It's, it's very under the S transformation, not under T transformation. Uh, could, sorry, could you say, say again? I mean, e E8, E8 best you know, model is well known that it has a complete model invariant partition function. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. So it's invariant on the S, but not not on the T, right? Because it has non-zero chiral central charge. Okay, I I I'll think more about it. Okay. Oh, sorry, I have a naive yeah. question. Okay. Um, I thought you assumed the partition function to be non-zero to have a very defined theta. Right, right. But but I see you ended up having partial function is zero. Um yes. Um so <laughs> for example for the for the BC ghost system the partition function vanishes identically, but we can consider torus one point function. Hmm. And uh in general, um there will be at least uh, one torus one point function that that's non vanishing. So mm -hmm. if that's the case, we can derive that the chiral central charge equals two times the integer. So isn't there and, any okay. contradiction, new argument? No, so, uh, I mean, what, what, what do you mean by a contradiction? Uh, I thought you, you assumed the partial function to be non-zero, to have a very different- no, okay. Uh, so, so uh, if partition function is non-zero, then um, I can um, arrive uh, the, the conclusion here that um, the chiral central charge should be a multiple of four, and if and if it's also reflection symmetric, uh, reflection positive, then it should be a multiple of eight. But now uh, we can consider the case when the partition function vanishes, and then we can consider torus one point function. And then I get uh, a more, more relaxed quantization condition. Okay. 
So you are considering different cases. Yes, yes. So, so the thing on these slides are for the case when partition function vanishes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, about about the, the, the example of refraction positive uh, CFD, I can give uh, another example. Uh, say, the, if you consider monster theory, that that has chiral central charge equals twenty four, and I mean it, this is actually a, a holomorphic CFD, so it's it's invariant on the uh, sorry, uh, sorry sorry so this one is invariant on the both S and T, okay. and a uh, chiral central charge is non zero. So okay, I I guess the the um the E eight uh, theory is the the one that uh, invariant on the S but not invariant on the T. Okay. So uh, next uh, we can uh, move on to consider um the U one anomaly. And uh, again we can uh, put the theory on uh put consider CFD on flat torus. Um, the space of U1 gauge transformations uh, may have uh, many uh, kinetic components and um, they are labeled by the winding numbers around non-contractible cycles and just given by this formula we consider uh, the lambda and integrate it along some uh, non-contractible cycles and I use, use this vector notation to to denote these num to I mean, combine these number into a vectors, and um, by the locality condition, the general form of the analysis phase should be like this. We have two kinds of local functional that we can write down. First one is d lambda a, and the second one is a periodic function of lambda times the field strength. So the, the, the other reasoning of writing down these two terms is that um, lambda is a periodic variable. Um, lambda is the same as lambda plus two pi. And we want the integrand of this integral to be single valued. So lambda can only appear uh, either like uh, the lambda or in a periodic function. So um, you can also try to uh, insert some periodic function uh, into the the first uh, in integral, but uh, all such terms can be uh, using integration by part rewritten into the, the second term, this fi of lambda times f. And and the coefficients are, as I said, only function that only depends on the the kinetic component, I mean the winding numbers. Okay, so for simplicity, we will also uh, work in the uh, flat gauge orbit, uh, meaning that f equals zero, so that um, these coefficient kappa prime just uh, do not contribute. Now we apply the finite Wezumino consistency condition. So um, we have these three uh, phases coming from the the transformation of these three arrows. And we want this combination of the phases equals zero mod two pi. So um, uh, uh, under some simple manipulation, we can rewrite the equation into this. So the, on the first line, we collect all the terms that are independent of A. And this omega here is the intersection matrix and we use a formula that the integral of d lambda one, d lambda two, with one over four pi normalization equals the inner product between m one and m two with this intersection matrix between. And um, for the second and third line, uh, because uh, the gauge field A and the uh, gauge parameter lambda one, lambda two are arbitrary right now, so the second and the third line should vanish it identically um, and independently. So this tells us that um, this uh, kappa is actually a constant that's just equals to the anomaly coefficient 
kappa f square. And now we just left with uh, this simple equation. And on, on torus, there are two independent winding numbers, ma and mb. They, they are given by uh, integrating d lambda along the A cycle and B cycle. And um, the uh, intersection matrix is just given by this two by two matrix. So this equation can be solved explicitly. The solution is uh, given here. So we have linear terms in M and also quadratic terms in M. The coefficient of a quadratic term is the anomaly coefficient. And this equation also tells us that uh, the, the anomaly coefficient should be an integer. So uh, by the consideration of uh, finite wedge domino for just U1 transformation, we cannot fix the coefficient of, of, the linear, of the linear terms. But if we consider the mixed finite wedge domino uh, uh, equations for, uh, for U1 transformation and modular transformation, this will tell us that the coefficient of the linear terms are also given by the anomaly coefficient kappa f square. So let me give a, a summary of uh, what we have uh, seen. So uh, from the inflow paradigm and the transcendence level quantization, that would tell us that uh, the chiral central charge should be a times the integer, and the chiral level should be an even integer. And from the finite wedge domino consistency condition, we found a strictly weaker quantization condition that says the chiral central charge uh, should be an even integer and the chiral level is an integer. And this quantization condition is saturated by the holomorphic BC code system. And we can also explicitly verify the anomalous spaces to see that the anomalous spaces uh, actually uh, also, I mean, set, or, or says all the phases satisfy the final wedge domino. And um, we can also show that uh, for CFT with a chiral central charge not a multiple of four must include ghosts, namely the Grassmann valued uh, integer spin fields. And uh, if the chiral central charge is not a multiple of eight, then the theory cannot be reflection positive. So any questions so far? So just, just to clarify, so the infinitesimal way zooming will give the same answer as the inflow, right? Um, the infinitesimal, infinitesimal way zooming actually uh, do not give you any constraint on the anomaly coefficient. I see, okay. You, you actually need to use final way zooming to give you any quantization condition. I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can see that the quantization condition only is, is only are only sensitive to the to the um, global structure of your group. And if you only consider infinitesimal transformation, then you will not find any. Okay. So now let's come to the second part of this talk: the mixed gravitational anomaly. The holomorphic BC ghost system um, has a, a mixed gravitational anomaly. And uh, in terms of the CFT data, this anomaly shows up in the OPE between the stress tensor T and the ghost number J, current no, number current J. So there is a one of the Z cube terms in the TJ OPE and with the coefficient um, in the anomaly coefficient for, for the mixed anomaly. And and um, you can also, by some simple computation, find out the value of this coefficient is given by the, this parameter lambda. And when lambda is an integer, this coefficient is an integer over four. And, um, and more generally, uh, this anomaly can be seen from an anomalous current conservation equation. If you consider that of number of mu j mu on um, some non-trivial background, then uh, you will find out the, the right-hand side that the first term that um, the first term is due to the pure anomaly. And you, we get, also get a second term that's proportional to the Ricci curvature, and that's due to the mixed anomaly. 
And if you integrate uh, this equation, you will arrive a, a, a well-known fact that on a general Riemann surface, the, the ghost U1 uh, symmetry is only conserved up to a background charge that's proportional to the Euler characteristic chi. And this fact is very important in the stream perturbation theory. So the perturbative Wazumino consistency can be solved by inflow. And um, so the inflow is uh, bas basically the, the statement that we want to find a closed and a big and background gauge invariant four form, like you know, by I4 that satisfy the descent equation. And um, so uh, we want to find the, uh, this four form I4 that's the uh, exterior derivative of uh, a three form I3. And the gauge variation of I3 is D of a uh, two form I2. And this I2 is uh, related to the Nabla mu, J mu. And if we can find out uh, uh, this four form I4 by that satisfy this equation, and it's also gauge invariant and closed. And then um, that would give us, this, that, that, that would, I mean, that would tell us that our anomaly uh, is consistent with the perturbative finite wave zoomino. And there are some literature actually says that there is no solution to the descent equation for this particular mixed gravitational anomaly, but we could actually find such for We four form uh, actually depends on uh, the epsilon a b. The a and b are the local Lorentz indices, and this epsilon a b is an invariant symbol in the one plus one d. But this breaks the three plus one d or two plus one d Lorentz invariance. So uh, we can actually um, solve the descent equation, but uh, the solution is not uh, three plus one d or two plus one d Lorentz invariance and it's only one plus one D low end invariance. So let me show you the solution. So the anomaly polynomial uh, four form is just given by uh, F wedge uh, epsilon AB, RAB. The RAB is the curvature two form. And um, <clears throat> now let's try to see the, check the descent equation. So this four form, is uh, given by exterior derivative of this three form. And there is an ambiguity of adding a closed three form, that's D of something. And this ambiguity is related to uh, adding a local counter term to the effective action. And um, so we can consider gauge variation, the background gauge transformation of this descent three form. And we will find out is this is exterior derivative of something. And we can also see that this two form is related to uh, Nabla mu, J mu. So uh, this anomaly polynomial really gives a solution to the uh, design equation. But um, the thing is that uh, this epsilon AB explicitly appears. So this solution is not uh, 3 plus 1 D Lorentz invariance. The descent two plus one form uh, could uh, serve as the Lagrangian density of the bulk uh, two plus one dimensional classical action for the inflow. And but uh, this epsilon AB explicitly appear, so this inflow would uh, breaks the two plus one D Lorentz invariance. And uh, say in other words, we need to pick a special direction and basically consider. Uh, our three di our three dimensional manifold is a product manifold with with m two times a uh, half line, and um, and we have uh, this inflow action. Let's just basically put the descent three form in the integral and integral over uh, this product manifold, and this action is the uh, well known uh, Wenzi topological term that is uh, relevant for the whole viscosity in non-relativistic quantum hole system. 
but uh, it's a little bit uh, unsatisfactory because uh, it's non-relativistic. And we will propose another but slightly different inflow mechanism that uh, preserve the 2 plus 1 D Lorenzi invariants. The proposal is that we want to match the uh, 1 plus 1 D spin connection with a, a three-dimensional SO2 gauge field I will denote it by AR. And then we can just consider the mixed transimens action uh, with A wedge DAR. And as I said that uh, AR, if we uh, restrict it to be at the boundary, that's the, the M2. So M2 is a boundary of M3. And then uh, it should um, be identified with the spin connection. And uh, the coefficient of this uh, matching equation can be fixed by uh, match the uh, uh, flux quantization on both sides. And now um, we can see that for this inflow action, we do not need to restrict M3 to be a product manifold and M3 to be uh, just arbitrary manifold. Now, if we treat uh, this bulk action as an ordinary mixed uh, transimens action, then the level is quantized and the quantization is, says that the kappa FR should be uh, an integer over four. And we can see that the holomorphic PC goes system uh, uh, satisfy the quantization condition. That's very nice. So let me give uh, some remarks. So it may be possible to derive a quantization condition for, for the anomaly coefficient by using finite wedge domino. And however, uh, if we want kappa FR to appear in, the, in our analysis, it is necessary to go beyond flat torus. So namely, we need to consider higher genus Riemann surfaces and we leave this for future work. And um, in general CFT, uh, it could be non homomorphic CFT, uh, the, the mixed anomaly will appear in the TJ OBE and the T bar J bar OBE in the leading uh, singularity. So the coefficient of the one over Z cube terms and the one over Z bar cube terms, they are on this alpha and alpha bar. And the sum of them uh, give us the, the anomaly coefficient. So um, it's curious that um, here we get, we, we get the sum of the, the, the coefficients in the OPE. But for, for the pure anomaly, for example, pure U1 and the pure gravitational anomaly, we get a difference between the, the left and right central charge or the left level and right level. So, um, so far we do not uh, know, uh, I mean, I mean of, of course this plus sign is coming from direct computation, but uh, we do not know any good explanation or, or how to make use of this plus sign. And um, so this, this relation also tells us that if the anomaly coefficient is non-zero, then J is not a primary operator. So there, there should exist a weight zero operator that is not an identity operator. And then uh, this tells us that the CFT cannot be both reflection positive and compact. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, good. Uh, can you explain uh, that point a little bit further? Uh, I, I need oh, the argument, um, last argument. So if we, if we assume the CFT is reflection positive and compact, then, um, then J uh, and any operator should be either uh, primary or descendant. So we see that J is not a primary, so it, it should be a descendant. So it should be, uh, um, and then we can try to find out what, what's a primary or, or that. Uh, and, and then uh, because J has um, dimension one, so the primary operator should have dimension zero. And, but, but uh, it also cannot be the identity operator. And, but in, in a compact CFD, the only uh, weight zero operator is the identity. So, so we get a contradiction. That's why the, 
the CFD cannot be both refraction positive and compact. I see. So the compactness uh, plays an important role here. Right. In right. the argument. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Right. We can find out other systems um, that's non-compact, and 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 they 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 have this um, mixed anomaly. So of course the PC Go system is compact but not refraction positive, and there are some other system that is uh, refraction positive but not compact, and that can also have this anomaly. Okay. Um, uh, uh, given the current uh, J, we can construct uh, the U1 symmetry defect by basically simply integrate. Uh, this combination along a curve, some curve. So N here is the normal direction of the curve. And this eta parameter uh, labels the U1 element and it has periodicity one. So we, we pick the normalization such that eta has periodicity one. Now let's consider uh, deforming uh, the curve C to C prime. So that will uh, swap over some domain B so the boundary of this domain is given by the difference between C prime and C. Now um, let's uh, apply the divergent theorem. So let's, let's consider the difference. So that will be a line integral over the boundary of D and then we apply the divergent theorem to write the line integral into an area integral. Then the integrand is not from J mu. And now we can apply the, the um, anomalous conservation equation and replace number mu j mu by the Ricci curvature r. So, um, so, so this tells us that if we uh, swipe uh, the curve, I mean, we deform a curve from C to C prime, then it would generate a phase that, that given by this integral. So, so this tells us that the defect line L is topological on flat space, but not topological on curved space, and due to this mixed gravitational anomaly. And this is uh, what we call the isotopy anomaly of the defect line. So we, and we can try to eliminate this isotopy anomaly by adding an improvement term to our definition of lines. So, um, give, given our, our old definition of line L, we add uh, a term that's the uh, integral of the extrinsic curvature over uh, the, the curve. And um, th this combination will be free from the isotopy anomaly because if we try to vary the line from C to C prime, the changes of the extrinsic curvature and, and then this integral will cancel the anomalous space by the gauss bonnet theorem. But there is a drawback. Uh, consider the case that we put the curve on flat space. And basically, it is like, like this, this diagram. And there is no extrinsic curvature. Oh, sorry, there, there, there's no curvature. The Ricci scalar equals 0. But there is extrinsic curvature. And if we integrate the extrinsic curvature, we get uh, four pi. So we get um, this formula for a closed curve on flat space. And now um, recall that um, the eta is a periodic variable and we normalize the periodicity to be one. And but uh, if we have these terms, that may change the periodicity. So by the inflow quantization, we know that the, the mixed and the, the anomaly coefficient kappa fr should be an integer over four. And if the kappa over r is one over four plus some integer over two, then uh, we can see that um, the, the eta for the L tilde, the periodicity of eta is no longer one, but two because of this phase. So this tells us that if we consider the U1 that's uh, generated by the, the um, that that's defined by the improved defect line, this L tilde. 
then uh, this u1 tilde, the periodicity of u1 tilde is doubled. And so this tells us that um, the charges, the, the B and the, the charge of the B and C ghost under this U1 tilde will be doubled. So, so for B ghost, the charge will be minus two and C ghost, the charge is plus two. So this shows us that there is a tension between the isotopy invariance, the, basically the topological invariance of the curve and also the faithfulness of the curve. Okay, um, finally, let me give some concluding remarks. So first is basically the, the summary that um, from the anomaly inflow and trans Simons quantization, we found uh, this quantization condition. For, for final wet zoom in, we found the uh, strictly weaker quantization conditions for the pure anomaly coefficients. And uh, we leave the analysis for the mixed anomaly coefficient for future work. And for the holomorphic BC ghost systems, we can find out that they saturate the quantization condition from the final wet zoom in. And, and for the mixed anomaly, it, it also satisfies the quantization condition for the, from the inflow paradigm. And there is a, 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 a natural question to ask is that, uh, is there a new two plus one D classical action that's responsible for inflowing the anomalies of the BC ghost system, namely uh, the chiral center charge equals minus two and the chiral level equals one. And there is a classification of the two plus one D uh, non-spin invertible topological holder using uh, braided fusion categories by Kong and Wen. And this classification shows that the chiral center charge should be an even integer. So this classification tells us that there may exist some uh, invertible non-spin topological order that's responsible for for this um, for for inflowing this anomaly, but however, um, there's no known so far. People haven't found such non-spin invertible topological order that realize the minimal chiral center charge c minus equals plus or minus two. And uh, about uh, the mixed gravitational anomaly, there's a a higher dimensional generalization that's basically given by this anomalous phase. So the lambda is the, the U1 gauge parameter and E D is the uh, D-dimensional Euler form that's just explicitly given by um, epsilon A1 to AD, this epsilon symbol, a contract with a function of the uh, uh, curvature two form. And this anomaly can also be inflowed by a U1 times SOD mixed trans Simons action. And with the SOD gauge field being identified with the D-dimensional spin connection on the boundary. And um, so the, the, this way of inflowing is the relativistic way, the relativistic inflow. There is also a non-relativistic inflow by a higher dimensional generalization of Wen-Z terms. Okay, that's all I want to say. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, are there um, any uh, questions? So what is the 3D topological, invertible topological order you mentioned? Oh, well, that is um, basically uh, uh, just uh, the uh, uh, SP, uh, uh, an SPT phase. Um, I mean, that's just a, a fancy words for, for classical action. Yeah, so by the way, what about the beta gamma system? So is the story the same? Um, yes. Uh, if you look at the the their the, the central charges, and um, if you also restrict the beta and gamma uh, to have integer spin, so that you can so so that they are non-spin CFT, 
And then um, the the chiral charge is also a multiple of, uh, it's also an in, even integer, so that also okay. feed into the to the classification, and the the chiral level also equals one. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other question? Comment? So, Timmy, in your last example, so what is the correct topological, uh, sorry, correct defect operator, which is topological or which one? So, could, could you say, say again what was the correct what? Topological, uh, sorry, correct defect operator, line defect operator, which should have be oh, considered the um, so, um, so here um, we, we, we reach a dilemma. You can either use uh, L as your uh, defect lines, and then uh, L will have, um, would, the L would, would not have uh, isotopy invariance or topological invariance. And you can yeah. also use L tilde as your defect line, but then L tilde would not act faithfully so this really is a tension between uh, these two, two properties, the faithfulness and the topological invariance. Mm -hmm. The L tilde can be considered as the symmetry operator only when we have this quantization for the charge for B and that's C right. given by this. That, yeah, that's right. right. So uh, saying other words, um, you can find out an element in L tilde that 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 does not act on any local operators. So mm -hmm. that that means that L tilde is, is not a faithful line. Thanks. Now another question: What is the quantization condition for K? For the Kong and Wong model, uh, Kong and Wen model. Um, let me see. Try to. I think they. I'm not really sure. I think. Okay, I need to check. I think they, they got even integer. I, I'm not sure. I even integer, I think. Uh -huh. They made it, their prescription or their classification cannot give the correct. To uh, the but, but there, there, there might be a way to fix this problem that is um, so here if I use if I just declare that I want to use u1 tilde as my symmetry instead of u1 and then uh -huh. um, then the pure uh, u1 anomaly would actually be four times the old u1 anomaly so if we multiply so so our our old U1 anomaly coefficient is kappa F squared equals one. If we multiply that by four, then that will satisfy the, the quantization condition from inflow. Okay. Thank you. So is there, is there a way to generalize this, like, I mean, to higher dimensions? So, like, what is, I mean, intrinsically uh, two-dimensional in, in, in this discussion? Um, well, pro probably, I mean, the gravitational anomaly, you would need to go to six dimensions, for example, but... Yeah, so for finite wave zoomino, you can apply that to any dimensions. And right. But I would imagine the analysis will be harder. So for two dimension, we kind of just only look at the simplest example that just on flat torus. But in higher dimension, maybe you can consider flat three torus. Uh, I'm not sure what you will get. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's, it's straightforward to generalize to higher dimension. Thank you. The questions. Uh, 
uh, or comment. So why are you, were you interested in cost system? There are many non-unitary uh, theories also. So. Um, yeah, there's one thing I did not mention. So, um, so our motivation is actually, uh, our, our original motivation is actually uh, from this this particular mix anomaly. So here I I, I show that this, this mix anomaly can only show up in in uh, e either non non refraction positive theory or non compact CFD, but um, but uh, if you regard, um, I mean, the isotopy anomaly is kind of a generalization of this mixed gravitational anomaly to to more general systems. Um, for for example, if you have um, if you have discrete symmetry or um, some other topological defect lines that that are not associated to any symmetry, you can also you can also have you can still have uh, isotopy anomaly. That, that you can define it basically by saying that if you swap the line over some domain D, you will pick up some phases. And actually in this more general setup, you can find out some unitary and compact examples that have this, um, yeah, that have this isotopy anomaly. And one simple example is that you consider any CFT uh, with uh, and any 2D CFT with an anomalous Z2 symmetry. And then if you consider the Z2 symmetry line, you will find out that it, the Z2 symmetry line has the isotopy anomaly. Thank you. So yeah, so we are originally thinking about the isotopy anomaly and that's why we want to, that, that lead us to consider the PC go system and then we just try to understand the anomalies in PC code system in general. Uh, any other questions? Uh, maybe I can add one. Uh, I mean, uh, for this uh, uh, BC ghost system, uh, where I mean, so what is your uh, uh, final claim? Uh, anomaly uh, inflow mechanism uh, is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, anomaly inflow from our three dimension is impossible or, uh, 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 or one cannot identify, well, uh, it is possible, uh, but one cannot identify uh, the, the corresponding classical action uh, of one yeah, from, yeah. from Cohen's classification, um, it looks like it's possible, but so far people haven't found out such uh, 3D theory that uh, responsible for this particular anomaly. Hmm. I see. I see. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, uh, let's thank uh, uh, Chiming Chang uh, for his nice talk.